Hi, Mark Savage here and welcome to my channel. Today's video is the Audi Q2. This model is the S-Line 1.4 Auto. We're going to be having a short little review of this and we're going to be looking at the rear brakes, changing them. You're not going to find any videos online about them and I'll tell you why in a little bit. And here we have the Audi's 1.4 150 brake TFSI 7 speed auto engine. Believe you me, these engines, even a 1.4 but 150 brake gives you the confidence to overtake in any situation. It feels much bigger engine under here with the power. I've had two litre motors that don't feel as, as pokey and as strong as this little engine here, which is quite amazing that I've managed to get that much brake horsepower out of this 1.4 engine. Well, I just couldn't knock it at all. Now, it is the wife's car, and I don't get to drive it that much, but she does love it. The new Ford ST is only 1.5, lots of brake horsepower, but that to me doesn't sound right. I mean, the early STs were like two and a half litre, five cylinder engines. Now it's a 1.5. I know they're fast, but it doesn't seem, this is perfect. Headlights, here in the UK, you will get flashed at a little bit, especially the roads around my area, the back roads. People think you've got high beam on all the time. Great inside, not necessarily great when you're coming up to them. Let's look at the rear. Nice and wide. Little twin port exhaust here. And inside in this boot space. This really is a massive boot. And yes, it's got this liner, but I like this. They've designed it so you can have it in two heights. So this is the higher one. And then obviously there's a one underneath this for lower bits, but obviously I like putting all the uh, crap in here. You can see a new set of Brimbro brake pads, I'll explain it more later. So yeah, very nice size, split 60-40 seats. The rear, you really can get five people in this, although two are really, really comfortable. As I said, this is the S-Line model. It's been frosty, and again, it's not my car. And the uh, foot space is not that massive, it's just that I've got an itty bitty wife. Hence the pillow. It, yeah, you can't get a normal sized person in this seat. Let me just get rid of that pillow. Why are they always there? That's a little trick you're supposed to be able to put your foot in and push it back. No. It's a little bit dirty. As I said, a 1.4 automatic 7 speed. Now let's get out of the way of the road traffic. I have to say the instrument panel is a screen like your sat nav. You just have to have this model if you're gonna buy one. Turn the key on, and I just love this dash. You can change the size of these clocks. You can do an awful lot with these. You can also have, when you're on the sat nav, you can change it to here. You get your basic information. Um, steering wheel controls are absolutely amazing. You can do lots and lots and lots with this dash. There are lots of videos out there already on it. Yeah, let's turn that down. <laughs> Start, obviously, foot on the brake. But it is just very, very nice. You've got your different views. There's the clocks getting smaller and then bigger again. But yeah, you can have your sat nav. You can actually have it on here as well behind you. And I think that is just so, so clever. Anyway, very basic inside. But there we go. Very quick tutorial inside. You really do get... You know, the switches, the half-cut steering wheel, all the controls are here. Very nice, comfortable seat and very nice inside, if I'm 100% honest with you. I've always found Audi's great driving cars and also um, good looking on the outside as well as inside, you know. BMWs sear black plastic and they really could have updated their um, insides a lot quicker than they probably have now. And they're getting better, but Audi's have always, always done really well. Um, I've got on my channel a uh, TT, A3, A4, A8, um, the Audis, and again, you know, the a Audi A8, they're older models, but wow, do you get a lot for your money. You really do. Now, as I said, it was really quick. I do want to talk to you why you probably haven't found any Audi Q2 or lots of other newer models how to change the rear brakes, and I did try. So let's not do that again. I've got a tiny drive that's on a main road now, not like my old house used to be. Massive garage though. <laughs> Just trying to find some bikes. Um, but too many cars going by. As I said, I had a nice big production doing for that Audi. 
Um, but I haven't managed to do it because it's getting out and about and obviously camera and my computer blew up. I could keep going on. But let me continue about the rear brakes. Now you're not going to find, sorry about the bone noises because the dog's in here again. <laughs> Everywhere I go she goes. You're not going to find any videos on how to change the rear brakes on the Audi, I'm assuming VW and it's a Skoda, all the same design. Now since 2008-ish, they've started using electronic handbrake, you know, little, you can hear them going off. I know a lot of cars use them now. And I said to the missus many years ago that it will get to the stage where you won't be able to do your basic stuff on a car. Like changing brakes to me is basic. Normally it's um, 17 mil, 15 mil, two bolts comes off, you've got a wind back tool which I use in many videos and it just pushes the back and you can change the pads back on again. Our maximum and that's doing both sides even if you haven't done it before. On my channel I've got uh, Ago, I've got a uh, Jag, I've got the um, uh, Range Rover and I've just recently done my new motor which is next video going to come up and it's massive, huge, American, easy. But when it came to the Audi Q2 I just Took off the back wheel, you know, jack it up, few, few tools. Took it off and I thought, here we go. Now I've got my basic tools in here and normally, if it's the rear, you're looking at 15 mil, 70 mil, or possibly even Allen Key or these stars. And I sort of got there and thought, wait, it, it isn't the same, you know, I couldn't get them in there. So it was a quick trip to Halfords. Audi decide to use these ones, these little stars, I don't know, zigzaggy, I don't know what to call them really, there's a name for them, I call them, I call them a star, because it's not your, your other normal ones, which most use nowadays, and I know I'm using the bigger ones, are these sort of five thread sort of ones, rather than these continuous ones, but they're these, you know, a lot of the new ones now, um, packs you buy, will have these in it, but, it's like the BMW, you know, BMW spark plugs and I bought that which was useless because you have to get this little bendy one that goes in there again you know spark plugs are always the same size little tool they've always been that size forever and most spark plugs are that size now medium ones they're doing this a lot now they don't want you to service the motor they don't want you to play with it at all but people like me a jack of all trades and a master of none I can lay carpets, I can do most things with cars. The only thing I think I'm a master at, I'd say, be a is speed fight. And I still get people on YouTube saying, you don't know what you're talking about, mate. I've built hundreds, stop it. But when it comes to cars, I'll put my hands up, you know? So I took the back wheel off, popped down to Halfords, got the bolt, took it out. There was a plug and another plug, and I took it out and looked and thought, this isn't mine. I can see the electronic handbrake on there that goes back and forwards. So I got two screwdrivers because my little winding tool wouldn't go in there. And I pushed a little bit and I just thought, do you know what, I don't like it. Um, some of you know what I'm talking about, they're going to go, no Mark, don't do it, two screwdrivers or the wind back tool. But I stopped and I thought, something wrong here. Popped up my local garage, don't go to Audi, okay. Popped up my local garage, do go to local garages, not going to promote them, but at the end of the day, you're going to pay a lot less. He said, mate, it's a computer, you've got to plug it into the computer. You've got to, it winds back itself in some description, I'm not sure I haven't done it, and that's the only way of doing it. So unless you're gonna have a laptop, and I don't know whether you can download the actual stuff, or you've got to pay a lot of money for it, the dog's squeezing by my camera. I don't know whether you can download the software, whether you've got to pay 15 pound for the whole pack, I don't know, but Audi and all the other manufacturers now are purposely making it, so you can't do it. Even a simple service now, like you change the plugs, but your bloody service light will continue going on. You go to the main dealer because they're the only ones that can do it and they just look at you and go, 50 pounds please, you know, just for turning that annoying light off. I did my daughter's little Fiesta ZTEC S. Um, that's a 12 plate. Serviced it, but it kept coming on saying um, service error or, or something like that on it, you know. It was real like you're really worried about it. Uh, and all it was was you've got to put the brake down, the accelerator down and turn the key, that's no longer about now, it just comes up and you get worried and you have to go and get and pay money. That's where we are today, they really don't want you to be doing anything to the cars yourself. They are just massive computers nowadays, but it's still an engine, you still should be able to change the plugs, air filter, pollen filter, change the oil and stuff, but they don't want you to, they just want you to go back to there. And cars now at 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand pounds. 
So the age of a little guy in a workshop for the new motors is dead. Um, unless you really want to pay a lot of money. You can still tinker around with 10 to 15 plates, I'm assuming, as long as they haven't got too much technology. But there you go, you can't do it. And I mean, I do, I do pay out for your tools that you need. But if you can buy tools that you still can't do the job, that's a real bugger, isn't it? Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. For those who have been watching my channel for a long time, this is what I do, I chat. Uh, I try and get as basic and easy as you'd understand. Normally I'd have put the back wheel off and showing you, but I just didn't think it was any worth doing it because you're not going to be able to do it. For those people who just watched me for the first time, hello. <laughs> I'm a bit odd, a bit strange. The bloke down the pub that may have a few drinks with you and I chat. Um, all I want to say is, you know, stay safe as you can. Tinker around with what you can. If you can't find a video for it, there's a reason. And that's like, I couldn't. I mean, see, even me, I do try and look at maybe what I'm doing first off, plumbing or tiling or anything else. If you've not done it before, there's so many videos out there from so many other people to help. Hopefully this one will help a few other people realizing you can't do it. And this is a cheat. You know, I'm always willing that someone may then come up and say to me, Mark, there's actually a cheat for this. I uh, look on their channel, they've got no videos themselves, but hey, you know, it'd be nice to find out if there was a cheat, but again, the only thing I can say to you about saving money today would be buy the pads yourself, get quality pads. I bought Brimbro ones, um, there's many stores out there, I think they're 60 quid and they've got like deals for half price or whatever they're going to be. I think I paid about £27 for a good set of Brimbro, popped to the local garage and he said to me, mate, 40 quid. So £26 plus 40, 66 quid. I'm sure Aldi main dealer would have been a bloody lot more money and they'd probably come out with you need discs as well, I don't know, bearing, tyre, valve, you know, four or five hundred pounds later. I don't like that with these people. I really don't. We had a Peugeot, had it for a year, went back there and they said discs and brakes. I was like, well, I went up there because of the wife. I went up and said, what are you talking about? And he went, well, they are worn. The moment you pulled away from the drive, they are worn. They didn't need changing. There was about 10 mil on them. Cheeky buggers. Right, anyway, listen, take care of yourself, especially in America. I would not want to live there at present minute. Mike, hello, mate. Uh, he often says hello to me. That's just not nice over there at present minute. I, uh, I don't particularly like this country the way we're going here. But over there has gone way too far. And, um, yeah, quite worried because everything seems to come over here eventually. And, yeah, no, it's not clever. Take care of yourselves on the road. Keep safe. Bye-bye. And there's Millie, who has been annoying me. Bye.